This video is brought to you by BoardGamePrices.com. Find the best prices for board games at BoardGamePrices.com. Kia ora koutou, and welcome to Tigris and Euphrates in about 3 minutes. Review copy used. It is a game for 2-4 to four players. There is no solo mode. Playing time's around 90 minutes. It's a moderately complex game. One of the cradles of civilization was the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East. In particular, the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian and Babylonian empires all rose and fell between the rivers. Will your monument stand the test of time? Or will your empire become a curious footnote in a Wikipedia entry? The game ends when the tile bag is empty or the second to last treasure is claimed from the board. The winner is the player with the most points. Competitive. Only one player can win this game. Tile placement. Placing tiles and leaders is the core of the game. Player turn. At the start of the game take a screen, the four leader tokens with the matching symbol, six tiles at random from the bag, two calamity tokens and one unification token. There are four types of tiles. Farms, markets, settlements and temples. And each player has four leaders. Priests, kings, traders and farmers. Note that players do not have a colour in this game. Game. On your turn you take two actions. One action is to place a leader. Leaders can only be placed adjacent to a temple like so. You can also place tiles. Note that only blue tiles can be placed on the rivers. If you place a tile matching your leader type, collect one VP. A kingdom is a connected set of tiles and multiple leaders from different players can coexist in the same kingdom, as long as they are different types. However, if the bull player placed a red tile into this kingdom, the jars player would get the one VP. And if no leader matches a tile placed, the player with the king gets the VP. If a kingdom ever connects two treasure tokens, the player with the green merchant can collect one of them. If you ever have four tiles of the same color on a square, you can replace them with a monument. Monuments give the player with matching leaders one VP each per turn. A calamity token can be used to ruin a space, which can break a kingdom in half. If you place a leader in a kingdom and a matching one is already there, a revolt happens. Each player gets one strength for each temple adjacent to their leader, and one more for each temple they play from their hand. The loser removes their leader, and the winner gains one red VP and one for the leader removed. All tiles played are discarded. If two kingdoms are united by a tile, a war occurs. Place a unification tile to show this. Then as the lion is the active player, they attack with their blue leader. Each blue leader gains one strength for each blue tile connected to them. The attacker then plays tiles to boost their value. Unfortunately, the defender has lots of matching tiles, so wins. The loser removes their leaders and all supporting tiles, and the winner gains one VP for each of them. Redraw up to six tiles after each turn or war. Why would you like this game? Tigris and Euphrates is a unique game, there's nothing quite like it. Kingdoms rise and fall, and control of them changes hands constantly. It's a game that rewards daring plays and people who can keep track of an ever-shifting board state. If you thrive in chaos and confusion, this is a game you should really check out. But beneath all that chaos, it's really a game about maximizing the number of points you get each turn. Your final board position counts for little. Production values are solid, and the leaders are nice and weighty, and the tiles are good quality. The best thing about this game is you never feel like you're out of it. Even if you lose a lot in one turn, you can jump right back in and steal someone's kingdom from them. However, if you are someone who likes to build an empire in peace and slowly accumulate power in a game, this one will not be for you. Everything you build can be smashed or stolen from you. And the game requires some emotional resilience. I've heard some horror stories about playing this game with people who hate losing. If you like smashing empires but want something with more silliness, check out Small World. And for a more sedate game about placing networks, check out Power Grid. Tigris and Euphrates, flipping tables since 1997. If you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Patreon.